All right, welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Cold Waters, episode number five. So we have to destroy this uh, fleet tender group, and then we can get ourselves out of the Barents Sea. I personally don't want to stay around very long. This is totally enemy territory, completely enemy waters. So uh, that seems okay to me, even though actually, yeah, torpedoes first and then um, harpoons later if we need. But we probably do want to actually try to use a few harpoons more than necessary because we don't know on the way back we may be in, we could encounter we could encounter anything and the only thing we can't do is shoot down or blow up a submarine with a harpoon so it's better to have torpedoes left over. Anyways, I knew it to the Barents Sea, not my favorite place because of course it's pretty darn shallow. Even 500 feet, in my opinion, is just way too shallow. I didn't check, take a look at the bearing, but noise is pretty. That's pretty noisy. 94. It's on the higher end, but not noise. Not so noisy that we shouldn't be able to detect something. Yeah, and these things are coming in right now. We'll keep running ultra quiet for a little bit. Let's see. We might even want to. Uh, we lost Sierra One. Nope, we didn't. Well, let's just start identifying what these are. And these will be surface ships, so we can go this way. What do we have here? Uh, I guess this is a Grisha then. A Grisha, and what's Sierra 2? Uh, that looks like a Dawn. And a Dawn is going to be our non military ship. Grisha, actually, if it's towing something, could possibly already start detecting us with its towed array. Uh, okay, well, let's turn into the Grisha a little bit then. I don't know how my planes got set down, but it's probably not a bad thing. Yeah, we could drop a little layer. Actually, I want to stay above the layer. We're probably perfect right where we are. I want to be slightly above the layer, launch torpedoes, and then drop below the layer after that. So our torpedoes are going to be so um, quiet compared to the ambient noise that the only way they'll be able to detect those is when they go active. Okay, there's CR3. I was waiting for that. What do we have here? No. Okay, too far. Come on. A Krivak. Of course, it had to be a Krivak. My least favorite. <laughs> okay, so we're detecting this. This one's actually going active. It won't detect us quite yet, but... I think we're going to turn north and fire torpedoes from the north. These guys might be lost temporarily, but this Krivak is close, obviously. Whoops. Where are we? Ah, I see. <laughs> I accidentally selected them. Alright, so what we're going to do... Fire, and then leave. I mean, uh, drop a little layer. So, we'll try this Krivak. Is that far away? We have a good bearing on the Dawn now. So, let's just head north, which will be the opposite direction of their travel, which in this case, I think is a good thing. Because we got to get distance between us if we want to use the harpoons anyway. Idea here is just knock out one of the military ships first, at least, before we start loading harpoons. But in order to do that, we need to keep time on target long enough. Let's actually look for the Grisha or the Krivak. Actually, the Krivak is the one that's pinging us, so this is the one I want first. And once I get our heading to be like 010, I think we'll straighten out and just listen for a little bit. Hopefully, we can get a good idea. There we go, perfect. Uh, where exactly this Krivak is. So I guess Toad... I don't know, does zero mean that they don't have a Toad Array? They're not able to detect us is what they're saying with passive or active. This number being, the more negative it is, zero I think is the first chance they have to really detect you, but that's probably based on their distance and we don't know if this distance is accurate. So that's always a, a big question. I think the only thing we have to do is sync this Dawn to have the mission accomplished. Again, I don't know how to pull up the mission when we're in the combat, the tactical um, map. So we'll just sync everyone though, why not? 
That Krivak is quite far away. Okay. 64% solution. I don't trust that. But I'm willing to put it beyond the dawn. Okay. Then stop listening to the Sierra 3. Let's put up Sierra 1 again. I don't know. Let's wait a little bit longer. Confidence is growing as we continue here. 73. 75. Just tapping every now and then the time compression for a second. Speed it up a little bit. Okay, that's what I wanted. Good, now give me Sierra 1. In fact, while we're plotting out Sierra 1, I'm going to launch against Sierra 3. We already have our course, so this will probably break, but go to the surface. We know where she is, where she will be. There it is. And so far we haven't even lost that one, which is nice. I'm going to turn into it a little bit. I'd like to keep it on the wire if I can. So we'll see if we are able to. But prepare to launch Torpedo 2, too, just as soon as we get this Grisha. Okay, there's the wire break, so go ahead and <laughs> uh, rudder amidships. Reload. Uh, actually, don't reload that yet. We will stay ultra quiet. Why not? Now give me this Grisha. Give me something a little bit better. Knowing that she's going to go... She's going to go active. I think the Grisha's going to go active pretty quickly, as soon as the... Krivak takes a hit. So actually, if we knew the distance the Grisha was, it's actually kind of important. I'm going to change my rudder a little bit so that we don't lose this one. I'm actually going to launch early and try to keep it on the wire. Um, the reason is I don't want these torpedoes to fire to hit too far apart. So I'm just going to hope that this doesn't get lost. Please don't break. That one we need not to break. And we're not turning very sharply, only a rudder of five, but hopefully that's enough keep her on the wire until we figure out where the Grisha is. But again, I need to launch early just so these don't... Um, but it decreases the time that to Torpedo 2 will need to get on target. And that is important. Okay, let's speed up a little bit. Are we... Got, we're getting with our Toad Race. We actually have... A, okay, there it is. That's what I was waiting for. Was the better... Much better 86% solution now. So let's go ahead and guide it just in directly like so and now I don't care if it's a lot if it's lost or not and we'll go ahead and drop below the layer very good so that this is a very successful so far mission these are the impact times for these is about even and we could have even launched torpedo 2 a little bit later but okay I mean it doesn't it doesn't matter <laughs> and we're below the layer now I don't know, I think the, what's the depth here is 511, so we'll probably go to, you know what, just exactly where we are is fine. Okay, there, our missile, our torpedo, I should say, has acquired. We have eyes on. This is what we're up against. She looks like she's turning hard, evasive maneuvers. She has detected our torpedo. Uh, but has not detected us, and that's the good news. And it's doing some kind of evasive maneuvers. Might be forming a knuckle. Look at that, she has dual torpedo hedge, like hedgehog type launchers. Uh, I don't know what the newer ASW stuff is. All my technology knowledge is kind of stuck in World War II, but that's okay. And there's a hit. And down she goes. Okay, well, we might as well see what the next torpedo's up to. And get the Sierra 3 Krivak up. The Krivak, does she look a little more deadly? I mean, she has. Those rear guns and the missile... Yeah, the Krivak's more deadly, I think. With the tor the missile launchers here. Um, I think those are torpedo launches. Did I suddenly lose contact with it? I think I did. Uh, and then when this is all said and done, we're just going to go ahead and launch a harpoon. Just one. Yeah, we'll go ahead and make your reloads now. Just one torpedo at the dawn. and that I mean, the uh, harpoon at the dawn. Save a, one more torpedo for whatever we have getting back home. But it looks like we're going to be undetected in all of this. Which, of course, I am always happy to know. Noisemaker. This one's not... Well, the torpedo actually was out of the water for a second there. <laughs> you can imagine their Sea Whiz operators, actually. If I was them, I would be shooting at it. 
Do they? I wonder if you can depress the gun that low, though. Anyways, this poor unfortunate soul is about to eat it. One torpedo into the rear. That might not actually sink it. No, it is. Yeah, I mean, it would completely cripple its functionality. Everything in the rear, I imagine, would just be propulsion totally non-functional. But, so, let's get ourselves up to 200 and launch a harpoon and see if we need anything more than that. We'll go to periscope depth if we need anything more than that. So let's bring our own ship in. There's one sinking in front of us, and pretty soon another... I don't know where the other one is. Somewhere over there. Eventually we'll start going down as well. Passing 200, okay. Well, harpoon away, basically. <laughs> no reason to wait. Go ahead and... Uh, launch for Sierra 2, the Dawn. I actually want to see what the Dawn is. She is defended. You know, she might have... This is actually a pretty reasonable, reasonably defended ship. I'm going to have to look up this one in the unit reference. Can we... What are you? Dawn. B-34 gun. So it doesn't have anything. It's very noisy. Okay, that's good. This is the Grisha. Noisy. Not very noisy, but it does have... Stuff. <laughs> Ah, yeah, the Krivak is definitely better than the Grisha. You can see this one only has set 65 torpedoes, but this one has the Test 71 torpedoes, which I think is the um, rocket-fired ones, the missile-guided ones type stuff. Um, was that our hit? No, I want to go to the Dawn. And, well, there's our hit. Okay, very good. So, mission accomplished. We're going to reload a torpedo. And after this, that's it. Kind of an easy mission, right? Wait for this to be reloaded, and we're all good. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, vessels nearby, you say? Oh, I like the sound of that. We might have a torpedo... I mean, not a torpedo. A submarine lurking somewhere nearby. Well, this is a little bit more difficult. Obviously, the depth we're dealing with here, 500 feet, is not amazing. What's worse is all these corpses are going to make quite a lot of noise. I mean, is this a helicopter? It's not a helicopter, it's definitely a submarine. Well, I'm excited, so we get a little bit of everything in this mission. Let's get below the lair, and let's see if we notice anything there. I don't think we will, though. So... Yeah, definitely a vessel nearby, okay. Well, let's go ahead and do our duty then. Let's go active. Switching to active. By the way, I need to just make a quick adjustment for the sound. I want the music to go down a little bit, the volume to go up a little bit. Actually, the music's fine, but we need the volume up a little bit because I'm not hearing like the active pings and all that. So, yeah, just this has to be maxed. I turned up the game sound a little bit as well, so I probably should be turning down that music. Just make sure it's not overwhelming. Okay. Now, let's see. What are we finding here? We're, we're definitely listening. That sounds like we're listening. What are we finding? Let's get above the layer. Nothing so far. Ah, there it is. There it is. There it is. We already have it. And torpedo's out. And moving to us. Well, all right. We will just fire and the reverse, the, what is it? Reciprocal bearing. And hope that our torpedo finds its target. So, Godspeed. We don't even know what we're up against. My, do I fire two? All right. Gonna let this break. I just really hope it doesn't find that Krivak, which it could. So I'm going to make I'm gonna rudder hard to right, right full rudder, and we're going to speed up a little bit as well, and we're going to drop down uh, a little bit lower. So if we're lucky, we can actually pull out of her arc, her visibility arc, if we're lucky. We're probably going to lose this line. Now I think... Isn't 333 our next... Uh, I don't know 
350 is our next, I think, depth where we can go without cavitating. Which we need to get to quickly then. So this thing is speeding up on us very rapidly. Okay, I don't think we're cavitating anymore. And if we're lucky, we're going to get out of its way. Basically just move 90 degrees, it's kind of perfect. Sometimes if you're really cool, you can move towards the torpedo and get behind it before it goes active. I don't give us such good odds. I also don't give us very good odds of catching them with our torpedo. I don't think we fired it in quite the right direction. Nonetheless, we are moving out of the way, slowly. We really can't go any faster than this <laughs> without cavitating again. But if this one goes active, then I'm just going to go flank speed because, you know, if it's active, it's not listening, right? That's still my assumption. That's just my assumption. I don't know if the tor torpedoes, they seem to only have a binary option. Either go active or don't go active. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cavitate. I don't care. Let's just get ourselves out of here. And if we're going to cavitate, we might as well cavitate in a big way. Let's go ahead and flank. I was getting some pings from them. Yeah, we might have done it. We might have actually gotten out of the way of this one. It's... Uh... Mm, yes! <laughs> we've done it. By golly, we've done it. So it looks like we're getting out of the way. It's actually still not moving that much away from us. Is it searching? No, yeah, I think we're I think we're fine. So left rudder ten degrees. And we will stop cavitating in a moment. Maybe our torpedo is actually finding them though. I have no idea. Wait. Okay, I thought I you know with all the corpses, I wasn't sure if maybe one of them was a the new a new one a submarine. Yeah, we're doing okay here. So let's stop cavitating. Let's begin listening. In fact, so let's go all ahead silent, or you know, rig for ultra quiet. And let's see what our torpedo is doing. Our torpedo is not. I don't know it. Ah, it must have hit one of the. It must have hit, like, the Krivak corpse. So we do need to kind of get away from those corpses, so we need to move away. And hopefully... We might have to go active here in another moment, though, because we have no idea where the ship is. See, like, what is this? Is this... Ah, there it is. Okay, we got him. Sierra 4, what are you? We are pretty sure you're a submarine. That lines up pretty darn good. Let me see if there's something better though. That makes sense if it was a whiskey. This, I'm not sure that one lines up. Oh yeah, it's a tango. Definitely a tango. All right, where is the tango? We had this and now we lost it? What direction, where were they? Come on, give me something. What <laughs> no. What direction were they? Man, I wish I could just ask my sonar man, okay, what was the last bearing of last contact? <laughs> Which is something you probably could do if this was a, a real life event. Well, let's reload this. We'll release from Ultra Quiet. I'm not worried about making too much noise. Hmm. Mainly I wanted to be quiet to detect him, but we're probably going to have to go active again to detect him. Unless, maybe he'll just give us another ping. So Tango. They're quiet, but they're not that quiet. So 132 compared to 94, I mean, that's a pretty significant signal to noise ratio. The noise is 94, but... Signal's 132, That's and this is a decibel, so it's a logarithmic scale. So that should be, that should be a really good detection profile. I, mean, I guess we just have to get closer to him. So let's go ahead and do it. Slow down. We know which way we want to move. Let's go ahead and do it. Move a little bit more that way. 
I wonder why my first torpedo missed, though. I didn't see. Unfortunately. Alright, we're going to have to go active. I, I wish I could detect this guy. I don't know where he is. Like, where? Show me your bearing. Just give me your bearing, please. Alright, let's go active. Active once more in the search. We know what you are, just show us where you are. I'm gonna climb just in case he's above the lair. Give me something. Come on. Go ahead and riot. Uh, let's surface above the layer. We're now above the layer. No sign of him. Where did this guy go? Drop below the layer again. Well, got a torpedo at us. <laughs> This is still that one torpedo. <laughs> it's so far away <laughs> from us. Any contacts yet? Come on, give me a contact. Smile, you son of a gun. Hmm. I mean, we can't do anything more than what we're doing. We're, we're broadcasting our position, these pings. Okay, let's go back above the lair. I gotta find him. It's not necessary that we get the submarine as well. But I want it. Yeah, I think it might actually be trying to leave. Well, we have a decision to make here. We can either pursue it very aggressively. Which I think I'm gonna do. We know that it came from somewhere over here, right? So... Alright, let's turn off active, and let's just go ahead flank, which is going to cause us to cavitate. Draw in another torpedo, basically. If not, we'll just slow down in uh, a little bit. when we are uh, a little bit closer to his alleged position, which I think was this way. Mm, still not there. Okay, let's move in towards the wrecks a little bit more. Uh, no luck, huh? All right, let's go back down to one third begin listening and begin active I think again even we'll have to drop below the layer once more just don't know where he is come on come out and say hello I don't even know where his torpedo was launched from above or below the layer so let's drop back below the layer as well Okay, we're below the layer. Trying to find him here now. Nothing. All right, fine. Oh, we sank him. Huh? We actually got him. <laughs> well, no wonder we couldn't find him. <laughs> We actually got him. <laughs> I guess we did sink him with our torpedo. That's awesome, our little snapshot. And the cool thing is, this feels realistic, you know? You would get done with a mission, and 
okay, maybe what satellite or some other report comes along saying that, yeah, the Tanko never went back to Soviet port. You actually sank it. But we wouldn't know any better. We were just like, okay, well, let's keep looking for him. Or we can pretend that we did a diligent search of the area and maybe found a new sonar contact on the bottom. It's not that deep, so not inconceivable. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode. So superb effort in locating and eliminating the enemy's ability to replenish their submarine force at sea. Keep up the good work. Further orders to be transmitted on this downlink. Let's get them. Okay, another world news event. We're doing really good, I think. United States Congress has called for more troops and armor to be available. Okay, anyways, we're doing well, right? This is the thing. Okay. Wow. Well, this is going to be interesting. I don't think I've ever done the TLAM launch mission before. Recent recon overflights indicate the Soviets take a rather lax view of safety rules when storing munitions creating the perfect target for cruise missiles armed with sub submunitions. Such negligence, such negligence will cost them, and it is you who will see to it that they pay dearly. You are hereby ordered to sail within 100 miles of Gramika in order to launch at least 10 TLAM, these are our Tomahawk land attack missiles, at this target. Important, if you do not have it, 10 TLAM missiles aboard now, you must return to Holy Lock and rearm with 10 TLAM missiles for this mission. Priority. <laughs> Rearm with 10 TLAM missiles, <laughs> missiles from Holy Lock. Then sail to Gramika and launch at least 10 TLAM missiles. You know, it's kind of funny. They don't really say where we have to launch them. And I've had, I, th I think I've seen another pr person doing this mission. I'm, I might have to test this off camera in like a separate campaign to see if um, I know how to do this correctly because I don't want to spread misinformation or fail a mission needlessly, but. Um, yeah, I'll just try to figure out what we need to do to do this. Uh, let's make sure that we're all we're all set. So continue on course, and let's just pause here because we're 26 minutes in. So in the next video, we return to Holy Lock. Hopefully, get back, move all the way back to the Barren Sea. What's worse, we have to go deep into the heart of the beast to fire some. Or at least we don't. I've had to do a mission in Ark Arkangelsk, Ark Arkangelsk. <laughs> and that's a very tough place. I mean, actually, to be honest, there's surprisingly few patrols in this area, which probably isn't true in real life, but at least in this game, they don't doesn't seem to generate too much activity in this area. But getting over to Green Miko is gonna be hard because this coast, this line of is really patrolled by aircraft a lot, and then the surface fleets and submarines will react to your position, so it'll be a tough one. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you back for the next one, I guess episode six soon. Until then, take care.